Well, hello, it's Wendy again. Today I'm working on a really exciting project. If you watched my last video, you will have um, watched me recover this book, which I'm turning into a journal for the year. And I've, I've done the inside covers and I just put a whole new cover on it, put a label on it from my flower and twig embellishments. Here's a couple of samples of them. You can find these on my website in the store, but also the labels like this, lots of them in this pack. What I'm doing today is painting something for this inside cover. And my goal with this book is to make it kind of an archive of the year. So along the way, I'm, I'm going to be removing probably lots of pages and putting more pages in. Before I forget, I wanted to let you know that right now, all the pages in my planner are free on my website. So all you have to do is go over there and download them at summerbaystudio.com and you can design your own planner. Today, I tried something new. I actually tried watercoloring some paper and uh, so that I can add these pages to the book and I, they actually turned out really well, kind of crinkly, but that's the look I was after. This, Some of them got a little bit too singed in the oven, but I'm okay with that. And uh, anyway, I what I used was Prussian blue in a solution, so I just mixed it up, some thick paint in a glass and poured it into a cookie sheet and then soaked the paper and then dried them in the oven. And I took a page out of the book and did the same thing with it. Because it was kind of a yellowed page anyway, it didn't take the color quite so well, so I let it puddle a little bit. And I might think of something to do with that as I go along, but it's kind of fun to have. Here's another one that I did with just, I sprayed it with water and then put some paint on it. And I think it'll make a nice little envelope or a pocket or something in the journal as I go along. So this is a, something that you might try. Uh, I found this really interesting, how just how it sat on the foil in the oven made these kind of um, patterns in it. And then of course I tried drying a whole bunch of them at once and got this and anyway, it's, it's kind of fun actually. I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to using that in the book, but that's for another day. So today, what I'm doing is putting a painting, doing this painting for the front. And I'm going to be doing blue for the few, first few pages because I want it to be kind of cool, like it's winter and it's, it's right now it's quite gloomy where I live. And I want something that looks kind of fresh, maybe a little bit summery, but I like the blue sort of icy look. So we'll combine that and see what turns out. So let's get started. Generally speaking with watercolor, you want to work um, on the layers from the front to the back because of because they're transparent you can't really paint over it and hide anything so what goes in the front has to what, what goes behind has to basically go around what's in the front so that means what it, whatever's at the back you can put on last however if I wanted to I could put the um, the background here the wall on first but I'm not going to and I'm going to do the plants first because they're kind of at the front here so to to begin with I'm using I'm using sap green which I have in my my in my big palette it's interesting how brands of paint in the same color name can be so different and I don't remember what the brand of this one was because I bought a big tube of it a long time ago and haven't used it up but I like this sap green much better than my newer one so I'm just going to this is going to be a really loose painting and I'm going to just put some vine around the, the side of the door here so I'm starting with this green coming out of this pot and then I'm going to use the hooker's green to add a little more more color and depth just keeping it really loose put a little vine here and then I want to also add some permanent yellow green because it's a pretty color and I'm mixing these a little bit on the paper so that it's not just blobs of this and that. Not that that doesn't work because it definitely does but I'm going to leave it just kind of like that and you see how easy that was? Just quick a quick vine up around the door. Now on this side of the door I'm, I'm putting in um, a pot of flowers. Let's call them um, undetermined flowers. 
It's kind of like when you go to the fabric store and you look at what's in a piece of fabric and it'll say undetermined fibers. And you think, okay, what's that mean? Well, it could mean anything. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing with these flowers. They, they, it could mean anything. So they might be geraniums or dahlias or whatever you like. But I'm using the same method here, just like very loose, just kind of plop them in here. I guess I put it, put some more down in the bottom. Uh, I'm using Matter Lake Light and the Permanent Rose with a little bit of Quinacridone Rose. So you don't have to use these same colors if you do something like this. Really, you don't. You can make them yellow, you can make them orange. Just do whatever pleases you, that's the main thing. Now, this is almost dry, which is great. Um, I will be putting some greenery around here, just not yet. But in the meantime, uh, I think I'll put some more leaves around the bottom here. That way I don't have to paint stems. Let's say it just sort of falls over the edge of the pot. See, I'm basically kind of a lazy painter. And I like to do things quickly because I like results and I like to do lots of things. So in order to cover a lot of territory, you have to be quick. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I like to have a bit of um, white space. I like a white space in, in watercolors. And I'm going to just make these. Oddly enough, this is burnt sienna and some purple and black that I had in my palette, which which produced this amazing brown. Go figure, hey? Eh? So actually I would like a little bit more gray. So let's try um, a little bit of um, Payne's gray. I like Payne's gray because it's more on the blue side, whereas lamp black is so black that it sometimes looks unreal. Like do, do rocks really come in that black black? Well, maybe obsidian, but that's one of the few. So I'm just going to make some stones here and this won't take very long at all. One way to speed up your painting is to just work on dry spots. So let something dry move to another spot. So I will be putting paint around here. However, oh, I missed, a, missed one here. It's not dry, so I'll wait till that is dry and paint somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'll do this pot, that's the first coat, and the other one I will do in the burnt sienna and give it that really dark terracotta shade, which is so pretty. You can actually suggest a lot of things by just leaving some white spaces. Now when both of those are dry, I'll put in the shading that gives them a rounded shape. Now I'm getting so that I can put some green in here because this is is pretty dry. So I'm going to just pop in some, some darker green. So I'm using hooker's green mixed with some sap green and a bit of sort of dark Dark blue. Yeah, I like dark blue. I like I like Prussian blue, but I have a mix on my other palette, which I'll show you. It's left over from another painting. So this is this is Prussian blue, um, ultramarine blue, and some lamp black and some Payne's gray. And so I just picked up some of this and mixed it in with this green. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I tend to leave the paint that I've worked with because some of my mixes I, I'm really happy with so if I don't need them that for whatever I'm working on next I just get rid of them but so this gives a nice dark green underneath the flowers where you'll see ordinarily you'd see shadows anyway and I'm just gonna dab a few little bits in here with a smaller brush because this one is holding too much water So 
So there's our little flower pot. And I'll also put in some of this darker color in amongst the vine because naturally there's going to be shadows underneath the leaves. Years ago, I planted an ivy next to um, a building that is next to our house and it's now covering the whole side of the building, which is nice because it covered up kind of an ugly wall. But it's fun to watch from my kitchen window because I can see the birds come and fly up and then they hop right into the vine and disappear. So it's a very cozy place for them in the winter when it's raining like it is now. It's very rainy where I live, especially in winter. So there, that adds some shadows in there, gives it a little bit more pop. And I think this needs a little bit of something as well. So I'm going to pick up some alizarin crimson and just it's a bit too much water. Let's put a little bit more dark in here. Just for some some depth. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now for the walls, I'm using this um, Jean Brion. And I'm going to mix in a little bit of this, um, what's that called? Naples Yellow Red, which is kind of a funny color actually, but it's nice. So let's see how that turns up. I'm looking for sort of a, sort of a European stucco look. I think this will give it to me. So let's try this. I'm going to, let's just go right along here. That's nice. I like it. Really undefined because this is watercolor and it doesn't have to be defined. You can if that's your style. I keep trying to get looser and looser in my style. And one thing that I can do to make this a little bit more stucco like is just to dab a little bit of it out. Like that. I actually painted my whole living room in this sort of style. I wanted it to have that European stucco look and it's just a really soft, kind of a creamy rose, old, not an old rose, but anyway. And what I'm going to do along the edge, some over here, a lot of this is gonna be cut off once I, once I work with it anyway, but uh, I'm really liking how this is looking. So I'm going to mix up some more here and take it all the way around. I think I want more water in there. But I'm working fast, as you can see. That little tink is the glass that my water is in here on my table. Take it up underneath here a little bit. And then again, just kind of dab some out. So that it's not too uniform, not too perfect. Quite like it. What do you think? Leave a message and see or a comment below and, and let me know what you think. Painting like this is really really not difficult. People go, oh yeah, it's you it's easy for you to say. Which is true because I've been painting for a long time. But if you just follow along and do what I do, you'll get what I get. And that's the great thing about taking lessons or learning technique. It's, it, it's really learning technique. It, is, it doesn't have a thing to do with talent. In fact, talent is kind of pointless if you don't learn a skill. So just learn a technique and you can get the same results. And um, that's my that's my advice. So I guess I'll just even this out a little bit since it doesn't look the same. There, I think that looks nice. Now I'm going to go in here amongst these little stones and put in kind of a similar color um, as the wall, only just a little bit, a little bit more gray. Because after all, if it gets walked on a lot, it's going to, it's not going to be bright anymore, probably. So this is just a really kind of a neutral color. So I used the same mix I used for this but then added a little sort of gray brown mix that I had on my palette anyway. Don't want it to be that dark. And I'll just pop this in here. I just 
realized I forgot to do this little part, which is actually the wall. So I'm going to just touch in some stuff here. I might end up putting shadow along here anyway, but if I decide not to, then I've already done the little bit of the wall there, which is showing behind the plant there. I think that looks okay. Now, what I want to do next is um, the door frame and the door. So you'll notice with my drawing, I just made a really simple sketch and my lines aren't really super straight or anything. And I'm going to paint in that as soon as this is dry. So I've decided to start with the door because that will kind of help me decide if I want the door frame to be lighter or darker. And the paint, the colors that I'm using are Prussian blue and cerulean blue and coming up with this color because I want it to be really nice and vibrant. And the tricky bit with things like this when you're trying to go around uh, an object is to keep all your edges wet, which is not always possible. And sometimes you have to just go back in and smooth them out with a little bit of water. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to keep this edge wet, is just leave it and move on and do this. Sometimes things go faster when you just turn it around. so that it's easier for your hand. I love the idea of a blue door. And actually, I've considered painting our front door blue. I'll have to um, get my husband involved in that because he used to be a painter. As it is, we have a blue deck, which I really like. So I'll just put this along here. And now I'm going to go back and do this part here, even though the edge has dried but by just painting it like this I can actually obliterate that line where it ended it doesn't always work that way but quite often does so got our little handle here do you notice what I did here still want to use my right hand so I moved the, my hand down the brush because I want the tip to go along the right side of the door so that I can keep the edge in front of me and now I turn it around this way because then I can see the tip go, go down this line it just makes it so much easier Now, there's the part across the middle. I'm just going to do a little neater job around the door handle there. I'm running out of the paint I mixed up, so I'm going to have to mix up some more, which is no big deal at all. And see how this is, is um, bleeding backwards? paint into it and that'll make it go away and then over here I want it to kind of blend in so I'm going to add a little bit more water so I'll take actually take the water right out of my brush so that I can just blend them together see that works I need to mix up some more paint which I will do now come out about the same same color. I guess that's pretty close. I'll paint this panel.
If you have a moment and if you have watched this this thus far, I would love to know what you would really like to see me do. Um, would you like more watercolor? I'm moving into doing some journaling and combining watercolor and and I mean journaling the the whole the term itself can mean so many things, but in in this case it's it's making a creative journal with papers and watercolors and writing and it can be like a planner and or just a photo place or you know lots of different things and I'm curious what you would really like to see so please leave a comment if you have some ideas and um, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen now I'm going to now that I see the door like this I think I'm going to make all the other parts a little bit darker the, this part of the door is already dry, so that means I can work on the door frame. And like I said, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And if I'm if I'm smart, which is sometimes debatable, I will go from here to here, or vice versa. But I think I'll go from here to here. That way I don't get a corner like I did on this one. So I've mixed up the same colors, only a little bit more of the um, Prussian blue than before. I might have a little bit too much water in there. Just tuck a little bit of this blue in here and then just pull it up along the side. Now I'm going to leave little streaks of white, the white of the paper, on purpose. because that will help define the edge of the door. And because I'm not aiming for perfection, I don't want this to look like a photograph. I have done paintings that look like photographs, and you know, they're as much fun as any other kind of watercolor, because I like a challenge. However, like I mentioned earlier, I like things to happen more quickly because that way I can do more things. And you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like the clock is ticking and if I'm going to get all the stuff done that I really want to get done, I'm going to have to get the lead out, as my dad used to say. It has been so dark here. We had Christmas lights up until I think yesterday and it's been so dark and gloomy that they've been coming on with the timer at like two in the afternoon because the cloud cover is so heavy and we can't go anywhere because of COVID. We're on sort of semi-lockdown, which means stay home, don't go anywhere unless you really have to. I mean, you can travel to other places, but then you have to deal with quarantine when you come back. And yeah, don't want to. Just, just praying that this pandemic ends soon for everyone's sake. However, whatever needs to happen for it to end, my prayer is that it'll happen quickly. Our borders have been closed here. I'm in Canada and our border to the US has been closed since March, which means there are lots of places in Northwest Washington that we like to go for a day trip because we're really close to the border where we live and uh, places like Hobby Lobby which I really like and we don't have in Canada I haven't been able to go to so there are, of course are lots of far far more important reasons for this pandemic to end it's the danger to people as we all know but I'm sure you're ready for it to be over as well. Now, here's my blue outline. For my door, this is the um, door frame, I mean. I like it, I like the white actually. I really like the white. And now that this part is also 
dry enough, I will paint these frames as well. And again, I'm going to leave some white around here so that it shows where the edges are. A lot of this isn't difficult at all, but it, it is sort of fine work in this case because it's small. So in that case you need a small brush because bigger brushes are more unwieldy. There are brushes that have nice fine points, but they also hold a lot of water, so you have to be careful that you don't drown your subject here when it's just a fine line. So what I'm thinking of for the journal, which I, as I mentioned is going to be an ongoing project, I'm re actually really excited about it. is to use some different color themes for different different sections. And I'm creating uh, downloadable, printable artwork and embellishments all the time. For example, these pieces. Actually, that would look nice there, wouldn't it? I'll have to see what happens when I cut it all out. Or maybe one of the ones with a little bit more blue. I did this series, there's over a hundred pieces in the whole pack and you can buy them from my website. So I'm just really excited about them. I'm really happy with, with how all the art turned out. And I'm just gonna finish this part up and, and then we can put the shadows on here and put finishing touches on. There, that's all the blue part. Now for the finishing parts, I have, I have the door handle which um, I think should be kind of a bright, bright brass. All that tinkling you hear is me with my brush, cleaning my brush. Yeah, that will be nice. Okay, let's do this. You say it's a brass door handle. Yeah, I like that. Um, so now just I just have to put the shadows around here and. Um, some glazing. Now, let me show you about glazing. This is about all there is to it. You can do things fancier if you want to, but don't need to because it suggests to the viewer that this is glass. And that's all that needs to happen. It just needs to suggest. And there's nothing really to reflect, so that works. Now, on these pots, I'm just going to lay down some water. And then I'm going to pick up some darker color. And just put it along the edge here. And let it bleed into the water. Uh, let's see, let's put some water in here, same idea. And just dabbing it in is a good way to put it in so that it doesn't have a finishing line. I'm going to do the same on this one. Actually, I'm just going to wet the whole thing drop in some purple, sort of grey-purple, along the sides. And then just kind of pull it towards the centre. When it cooperates, it works great. When it doesn't, it just doesn't. water is tricky. Sometimes it pushes the paint and sometimes it pulls the paint. So it's just a matter of sometimes it's just trial and error. Now I'm going to just put um, some dark underneath here and then we'll see what it all looks like. And 
this is just a mix mix of purple and black and I don't know what all. Sometimes color is kind of intuitive. If it looks right, then it's right. Now I'm just going to decide on a light direction because when you put in shadows, it makes everything pop. So I've mixed up um, some some uh, permanent violet, permanent blue violet, and a little bit of lamp black here to make shadows because I really like to have kind of a purple purplish shadow. And so I'm making it kind of a, a strong light that's coming from this direction, which means shadows will be cast along here behind the vine and in amongst the vine as well. And then we'll have some shadow here. Well, let me see, it's not quite dry yet, so we'll do this shadow. Just making it a little bit more watery as I go up. And I'm also going to make a, just a really fine shadow along, along this edge of the door frame because that, that tells your eye that it stands out from the wall. I'm not making it very intense, even though I could. I think I'll just leave it like that. Just dropping in a little bit of shadow I'm, uh, against the door here or the door frame because the leaves would cast shadows. So it makes it look a little bit more realistic, doesn't it? And then here, same thing. We we'll have a shadow from that. And that one is still not quite dry, but I'm going to risk it. Whoops, mistake. Make this shadow go along here. And then just soften the edge here a little bit because we don't want it to be all about the shadow, do we? There, I think that's good. I like it. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it like that and have a look at it. What I usually do when I finish a painting is I put it up on my piano and then just stand back and look at it and I can see what I think it needs or if it needs anything. And if I'm not sure, I'll leave it there for a couple of days and then I'll add as needed or decide. So it really helps to just get some perspective. So if I hold it up like this, I'm going to have a much different view of it than when it's like this. So I'm looking at it from this direction and if I change it so that I'm looking at it, my eyes are in the same place, but the painting has changed direction, it looks quite different. So I am going to um, just add a little bit more depth in here. And then I am going to scan this because I want to make it available for anyone who might like to just not paint it, but print it, download it, print it, and use it in your own art projects. So. I scanned my painting and I printed it and you can see the difference. Um, the printer itself makes quite a bit of difference and I was thinking of just using the print here. So what I'm, I haven't decided whether to put the original in or use the print. I don't want the book to get too thick. So what I'm going to do is cut this, um, just trim it so that it fits. and. Our book is five and a half by eight and a half inches. Let me just see. Yeah, well, that'll work. So I'm going to just trim this and then see how it looks. All right, I've decided to go with the print rather than the, than the original basically because of the thickness of the paper. So, and this is a little bit big, I'd have to trim quite a bit off. I actually reduced it a little bit when I printed it. And I believe I will put in one of these as well. Oh, I think 
that'll look really nice. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to just use a glue stick. Make sure I get the corners. And I've decided to add it, add one of these because it's year 2021 and I'm just trying to decide which one is a good one. I love them all. So there's that one. It almost looks like this is the house number. I think that one's a little bit too overpowering but I like this one. So I'm going to use this one and just put it on top here and that'll be the first page of of the journal for the year. I'm calling, I think, just my 2021 art journal. So it'll be fun to work on this um, throughout the year. And I hope you'll follow along. So please subscribe to my channel and click that little bell because that will notify you when I've got new videos. And there's our finished project. Now be sure to leave a comment below and I will see you next time.